Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to configure automatic snapshotting on Proxmox. Before I dive into the configuration itself, I wanted to share a backstory with you. So I'll talk about how we got here, why we moved from XCPNG over to Proxmox, and what are the benefits and downsides to using automatic snapshotting on the Proxmox. If you'd like to skip the backstory, I'll leave the timestamp down below where you can jump ahead to the configuration itself. So without any further ado, let's get into it. What you can see here is the end result of the configured automatic snapshotting for Proxmox. So I created a schedule to do hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly snapshots. Um, with retentions of uh, 10 for hourly, then 4 for weekly, um, 12 for monthly, and 4 or 6, I don't remember quite well, for yearly snapshots. And to kind of give you the idea of what we are running here, I have this presentation going on. So imagine three Proxmox hosts connected to FreeNAS with ZFS over iSCSI. And so everything's going to be kept on the FreeNAS itself. There would be a VM that's going to be doing automatic snapshots, handling the scheduling and things like that. Uh, it will use Proxmox API to connect to the cluster. And um, Proxmox cluster will just make a snapshot of the VM on the FreeNAS. All of this is done in the very automated fashion. And I'm very used to the automatic snapshots because we have them in XCPNG. But we decided to move away from XCPNG over to Proxmox because we are growing as a hosting company and Proxmox in the long run will be much more flexible than XCPNG. Just one example of that would be firewall virtualization. We decided to virtualize our data center firewalls so I was playing with PFSense on XCPNG. I tried to configure a few test networks and I quickly realized that there is a soft limit per virtual machine on the network interfaces, which means you can only configure up to seven network interfaces per the VM, which is much lower than what I was expecting. For example, in Proxmox, this number goes up to 31 network interfaces. And even at this point, it was a deal breaker because we have much more than seven interfaces on our firewall. I think at the moment it's like 15 or something. So 31 is plenty, but seven is nowhere near our desirable number. So this was one of the deciding factors why we moved from XCPNG over to Proxmox. Another thing is that Proxmox supports ZFS much better than XCPNG does. And you can actually use ZFS during the Proxmox installation for the root drive, which means that you're going to be able to do snapshotting for your operating system. So whenever there was a misconfiguration or failed update, you can just roll back to the previous snapshot and everything is up and running. If there will be an interest in how we configured ZFS over iSCSI to FreeNAS, I can make another video about that. As you've seen on the diagram, we have few Proxmox hosts connected to the FreeNAS and they are running their disks directly from the FreeNAS itself. This is the beauty of ZFS over iSCSI. And whenever you do the snapshot, the snapshot is gonna also show up in here in the FreeNAS. So you are now probably thinking, Yaroslav, why do we need automatic snapshotting on the Proxmox if we already have scheduled snapshotting on the FreeNAS? Well, the thing is, if you do snapshots directly from the FreeNAS, there is no streamlined process that will restore the snapshot inside of the Proxmox. I decided to use a solution from GitHub called CV4 PVE Autosnap. I'll leave a link for it down in the description below. But essentially what you need to do here is create a VM or a container on your Proxmox cluster or effectively any spare computer that you can find laying around. 
But what I did, I just deployed a new container on the Proxmox cluster itself and downloaded the software there. So just copy the link, then type wget, paste the link into the console of the machine of your choice. It's gonna download the script. After you've downloaded it, go ahead and install the unzip package. And I did it for demonstration purposes, but I already had it. Next step would be to unzip the program, then give it execute permissions. Then execute the command that I have on my screen to move it to the bin folder so we can access it system wide. The thing is that I've already moved it and I don't want to replace the working copy. But for this to work for you, just press enter. Okay, great. Now that we have software installed, let's see what options it gives us. And here at the bottom, it shows us the basic syntax, how it needs to be run. And this is what full syntax looks like. So name of the program, then minus minus host. And you can specify multiple hosts from your cluster to avoid script running on the dead host or something like that. So I've included two hosts in here. Um, then username, then password for the specified user. And I've exported the cluster password into this variable on my system. So it's easier for me to write scripts and then change the password in one place instead of changing it in multiple places. Then we specify the VM ID. In this case, it's 110. It just kind of breaks the line, but you see what I mean. Then you can specify the label and how many snapshots to keep. So this syntax I use for hourly snapshots. And let me show you what my script looks like for the hourly snapshots. So the script will create a log file every other day. It will insert two breaks. Then it says new job starts here and adds it to the log. Then it runs the command and then it says new job ends here. So nothing too crazy and I'll post my scripts down below in the description. But for this to work, you actually need to set up your cron job. And I'll be publishing my cron tab file as well down in the description. So essentially what happens here, as you could already imagine, cron job will control how often the task is run. And then the script itself will control the things like retention and other stuff. Also keep in mind that to run these scripts from the cron tab, you'll need to give them the execute permission. To showcase a script, I'll just run a daily snapshot, which is running on all of the VMs. And you can see that the log is traveling from one VM to another achieving what we need from it. So if we switch to FreeNAS test VM, you can see that there was a snapshot done at 2.32 in the morning and the same time is showing up here. So this is pretty accurate. And if we look for this snapshot over on FreeNAS, it's showing up in there as well. So there you have it, folks. That was the overview for the automatic snapshotting on Proxmox. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget that we do consulting works for the products you've seen in our previous videos or in this video. We also provide hosting for email and WordPress. So if you're interested in that, please reach out. But for now, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.